Hey there, welcome to episode 61 of Money Never Sleeps, a podcast that looks inside the head of entrepreneurs and at what makes them do what they do. I'm Pete Townsend, your co-host of Money Never Sleeps, along with Owen Fitzgerald. This episode of Money Never Sleeps is kindly sponsored by Ireland's fintech and financial services recruitment specialist, Top Tier Recruitment. If you or a colleague need help attracting and retaining great talent for your fintech or financial services company, we highly recommend you have a chat with the team at Top Tier Recruitment as they really know their stuff. You can find them at toptierrecruitment.com and tell them we sent you. In this episode, Owen and I talked to Paul Smith, co-founder of our sponsor, Top Tier Recruitment, but also the founder of a new business, simply called Possible. It's an executive and life coaching practice operating as a sister brand to Top Tier Recruitment, which he co-founded with Laura Smith in 2016. Our loyal listeners should be familiar with Paul from prior episodes, but let's just get right into it with episode 61 of Money Never Sleeps. we go again. Welcome to Money Never Sleeps. We're recording today from the offices of our sponsor, Top Tier Recruitment, in WeWork Dublin Landings. I'm Pete Townsend, and we're here with Paul Smith, friend of the show, sponsor of the show, co-founder of Top Tier Recruitment, and founder of a new business as well that we'll get right into. But first, welcome back, Paul. Thanks, Pete. Great to have you back. Good to be here. So we covered pretty much your backstory Mm. um, when we had you and your co-founder, in air quotes on, Laura Smith, um, back on episode 17, 17. which was last year. Um, And legitimately, your your co-founder as well as your partner in life. Correct. Um, But give us the accelerated version, just so we have the context uh, for some of our listeners that may not have heard the first episode. Just to uh, refresh. Just to refresh. Uh, So I uh, studied commerce in UCD, specialized in finance, managed a restaurant for a year after that because it was a good I never idea. knew that. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, I you working, ever get, do you ever cook? Uh, I cook now, but not professionally. No. Okay. No, no, no. Uh, love food. It's uh, it's a bit of a passion. But um, yeah, I, I managed or I worked in a restaurant in college and then the guy I was working with opened up a place in Cabantilly at the time. And he said, you know, you want to give it a go on the management side? And I did. It was either that or kind of go away for a year. So I thought it'd work. And uh, after about a year, I kind of figured, you know what, I should do something with my degree. So I went to a couple of recruitment agencies and it was 2007. So financial services was like booming in Dublin. Uh, so I was in looking for a job and then a couple of them said to me, you know, you should do the recruitment side. And I thought finance and, you know, finance knowledge could help. And I like working with people and I like the kind of entrepreneurial aspect to it. So I did and uh, got into recruitment in September of seven. I literally got a year of good recruitment back when Merrill Lynch were still around and Lehman Brothers were still around. Jesus, and yeah. I literally remember September 08. Uh, I remember Lehman Brothers closing and all of that stuff. And it just went to hell for about a year and a half. But then it started to recover. So um, kind of progressed <coughs> into into management um, on the recruitment side. Uh, then I would have joined State Street for a couple of years. So I would have managed recruitment for about 70% of Europe for State Street. I uh, spent a bit of time in Krakow, which was great. Then went back to where I was previously as COO. And then a year after that, myself and Laura set up Top Tier. Yes, that was January 2016. So we're year four now, which is kind of scary when you say it out loud. It flies by. Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's uh, Jesus, lots of lessons learned. Because I remember you asked us actually last year, you know, what, what would you do differently? And God, if you ask that question again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so we know it's great. And, you know, we're much more much more solid now. We're an actual business, it feels like. Uh, you know, we have a great, loyal um, uh, client base. We have loads of candidates that come back to us again and again. Uh, and I think, like we kind of talked about it before, you know, we do things the right way, we hope. Um, we certainly try to anyway. And I think that's stood to us. It's probably meant, you know, our growth in terms of, of uh, uh, in comparison to competitors who would have set up around the same time is maybe been a bit slower, but it's a lot more solid. It's a lot more real. It's a lot more tangible. And we're really doing now what we set out to do, which was really partner with clients. Yeah. You know, do more than just service with CVs. 
You Absolutely. Know? I think that really comes out in even the tagline that we use, that we read for every single podcast, mm. intro and outro that we do, Yeah, is that attracting and retaining great talent. Yeah, right? yeah. And when people need help with retaining, yeah. right? That isn't you going out and getting a fee for something. That's having a relationship with a company. Yeah, but I mean, I, I mentioned retention uh, kind of first publicly actually at Aminovate last year. Yep. Uh, and I'm sure when I did it, I remember thinking to myself, it's like, this is crazy. Why are you saying it out loud? But ultimately, if we have a client who has low turnover, good retention rates, they're a really attractive clients. So why wouldn't we want to retain staff? Or why wouldn't we want clients to retain staff? Yeah. And you it's know. that transparency that makes you who you are, Paul Smith. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, peace. <laughs> <laughs> So you did a coaching class earlier this year. Yeah, yeah I did a professional qualification in coaching. So it's uh, it was an ICF accredited course. It was uh, over five months, would have been 136 hours of training. Um, and yeah, qualified now. So uh, fully professional coach. So and you're wheeling that into a... A sub brand or a new business completely called yeah. Possible. Yeah, so Possible.e is it's it's a it's a sister brand I call yeah. it. Um, so we don't have any branding anywhere on either website that represents the other website at all. But uh, it is part of my email signature. So that's about as close as it gets. Yeah. But for for me, I suppose I, I kind of stumbled into coaching a little bit. Um, a good friend of ours, we were out for dinner one night um, and we were chatting about Billions, the show. Yep. And, uh, you know, we were talking about Wendy and she does her coaching and all of that. Absolutely. stuff. Absolutely. Just really liked the show. And, you know, th this friend said, God, I did this coaching course a few years ago and I think you'd really like it. So uh, I said, sure, why not? I'll give it a go. And I called uh, Alva Harrington, who's the, the, the lady who runs the course. And we had a very brief chat about, you know, 10, 15 minutes uh, I didn't look into it too much and then I got an email offer about three weeks before it was due to start yep. saying, you know, have you thought about it? And I hadn't, but I said, sure, why not? I'll give it a go. Uh, so I went down with no major kind of expectations other than I was going to learn something new that could be potentially beneficial for what we do. And really then it was, it was you know, this could be something that is very aligned to what we do and, and additional service, etc., which it still is to an extent. Um but I suppose for me, I discovered a whole new world of, you know, what's out there outside of kind of day to day outside of recruitment, which can be transactional at times. Uh, you know, th this was a lot more um, personal, a lot more involved, uh, a lot more. It almost felt altruistic, you know, yeah. um, but benefited a huge amount from it. So possible.e is, is the coaching side of, of what we do now. Um, and we do uh, both executive coaching and life coaching. And so working with business and personal clients. Tell me about the context of just bouncing right into that, right? In that you having relationships with executives already today, yeah. right? For the top tier business, yeah. the recruitment business. Um, and then moving that into a scenario whereby they kind of bear their soul. Yeah. Right. Um, that's a different context. Totally. How, how do you get them? Um, I know you're just beginning and starting out in the yeah. last couple of months, but what's your plan for... Um, getting them to to drop their drop their guard a bit. Yeah, well, I mean, the the great thing about what we've done with top tier is that people have started to drop their guard, uh, and people are a lot more honest around what they're looking for and what the issues are in their business. So I feel like we kind of have that relationship a little bit with with some clients, and it's something that we're always looking to develop with others. Um, it, it's it's definitely a different perspective, you know. Instead of you calling me to say, you know, I'm looking for a whatever, head of fund accounting, you know, you're calling me and now we're setting up a, a, a 12 hour engagement to, uh, you know, focus on whatever it is that you want to focus on. You want to look at how you land with people. You want to look at how you communicate. You want to look at how you show up as a leader or whatever. They're very, very different conversations for sure. Um, but I think an awful lot of it will come down to, uh, you know, the, the initial agreements, the initial kind of contracting that we do. Um, as part of coaching, setting up your contract and setting up uh, how you're going to work with each other as coach and coachee is, is really, really important. So it'll come down to that. Okay. And talk for a minute about the difference between coaching and mentoring. Yeah. Um, coaching and mentoring. So I showed one of the guys who, who we work with, um, I showed him a, a, a coaching demo 
And he turned around to me afterwards. He was like, what the hell is that? Like, that's the biggest load of rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> the coach did absolutely nothing. I was like, that's the point. Yeah. So uh, I suppose mentoring is uh, is kind of knowledge sharing. Um, it's quite directive. It's, you know, relying on maybe a, a senior person within a company or an industry to give you guidance, to offer you support. Um, and don't get me wrong, mentoring absolutely has its place and is very, very valuable. I've, you know, people I talk to, uh, around recruitment and other things so I, I certainly you know wouldn't discount mentoring at all but coaching is very very different um, coaching to me is uh, I suppose my role as a coach is to help you create awareness and to help you create perspective about what's going on for you um, it's very action orientated uh, it's it's not directive for me in any way so you come up with your own ideas and um, it's kind of based on the belief that you're resourceful and whole and creative um, and that you are the best expert on yourself. And that all sounds really fluffy. And honestly, seven months ago, I wouldn't have spoken like it. Um, but having experienced it, having gone through all of the training and everything else, um, it, it, it really, really works. And I think a good coaching session, <clears throat> if you're leaving a coaching session as a coachee, as, as a client, you want to be tired. You, yeah. know, you want to have done a lot of thinking for yourself. Yeah. Uh, but it, it's those little kind of light bulb moments almost that it creates is is really what energizes you through it and brings you back for the next one and it's it can actually be quite addictive uh strangely so yeah yeah i i did it uh, a few years ago mm. so when i first started off um in doing what i do i had some demons to exercise from mm-hmm. my past we all have them yeah and um that i f- i felt that i would wasn't feeling that they were holding me back but i knew they would kind of hold me back um so Someone recommended to me uh, a coach that works specifically with entrepreneurs. Um, I sat down for probably a two-hour session with her. And you're right, I was exhausted Mm. because she really put me through the ringer. And she said for her, the hardest thing about becoming a coach was to almost like being on Jeopardy, where you got to phrase everything in the form of a question, right? (laughs) 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 And that you can't make statements. Yeah. Um, Now, it's not that simple, obviously. Mm. But... What she really helped me to do was almost compartmentalize some of those demons into a a figure up on a shelf that just becomes kind of a, um, what's that word, an an idol, right? And and say, and and it, it, like you're saying, it does sound a bit fluffy, um, but it really does work. And if I hadn't gone through that, I'd be in a different place than I was. But but you need to recognize those demons for yourself almost. Yeah. Uh, And, and, you know, when you're when you're in school, I I always use this example. You're kind of told, you know, for leaving cert year, do a little bit of study every week and it'll make your life easier at the end of the year. And that's absolutely true. You know, no one can deny that. But that never landed for me when I was in school. But I realize it now. But I hadn't realized it for myself, even though I was was told it, you know. So, uh, you know, the demons or or gremlins, as people like to call them in coaching, um, sometimes you don't even realize they're there. You don't even realize they're they're kind of holding you back. Or, you know, the biggest realization for a lot of people is, Jesus, am I the person who I actually think I am or am I someone else? And that can be a really, really challenging thing to, to kind of confront and come up with. Absolutely. And you'd be surprised an awful lot of times it's actually the people in the senior positions who kind of have those those doubts or those little moments of hesitation and they can be drivers but they can also hold you back and it's kind of recognizing when they flip into into that holding back kind of you know side of things what are some of the signs when they kind of flip it depends it Does totally it? depends yeah yeah so i mean um let me think one for me i've uh, I, i've this one that's kind of you know self-doubt so it's like this internal monologue like yeah. that wasn't good enough so you know i'll leave this room after this and i'll be like could have done it better, could have done it better, could have done better. And that, if that lasts for too long, that stops me from doing other things. So it'll impact how I communicate later on with my team. It'll impact all of that stuff. But the flip side, the positive side of that is I always want to be better. I always want to push myself. I always want to do more for clients on the recruitment side, you know. I always want to push myself that little bit longer. So it's, I suppose, realizing that is, is the hard part. And that, that's the real key to coaching. But once you have that awareness, and once you have that understanding that this thing is there then you you can normally you can manage it or come up with ways of managing it for yourself absolutely you know and i think my thing changes monthly yeah (laughs) yeah we have we have a lot of things we have a lot (laughs) yeah yeah yeah. (laughs) what what do you think um in terms of you know uh, i was going to ask you about the personality traits of yourself that where this works but let let me take a stab at it because i know you well enough (laughs) paul anytime that you talk to me 
Mm. I can tell that you're listening with your ears and with your eyes, mm. right? Is it you're looking for probably self-doubt. You're looking for little cues of um, how to probably redirect your next question. Um, you know, and I think you are an excellent listener. And is that a personality trait or inquisitiveness or, or what, what do you think it is that where this works for you? Um, listening is a huge part and eyes and ears definitely. So, you know, you need to listen to what people are saying for the story. You need to listen for the, what they're not saying, which is nearly more important sometimes. Um, your eyes will, will obviously see and observe body language. You'll know when someone is thinking because they're looking away from you. You'll know when they're ready to engage again because they look back at you. You know, very simple things like that. Um, a lot of it is, is down to what's called level three listening, um, which is almost, um, it's, it's almost a feeling. It's almost an intuition. Uh, and for me, it's when I'm in that coaching conversation, it's being able to get out of your head a little bit and listen to what's in your heart and in your gut. And then I think there's the kind of uh, almost bravery to be able to share that with your client. Um, because very often you're picking up um, subconscious things that, that, that happen. Uh, so like I had a surprise party for Laura's 30th. Yeah. Um, and she hadn't a clue it was happening. It was great, actually. I'll show you a video afterwards. Awesome. But we opened the doors to the apartment genuinely. And there would have been, I don't know, 20, 25 people in the, in the, in the room. Um, she hadn't a clue that they were there, but as soon as she opened the door, she knew something was off. That's the intuition. Like, that's the gut. That's what you need to tune yeah. into. It's, it's a disturbance it's a in the force sense. almost. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah you yeah. know there's something not quite right. Yeah, the force is strong in that one. Yeah, yeah. so listening is really, really, really important. I think empathy is really important as well. Um, you know, y- you need to be able to maintain that kind of positive vision for your clients. You need to be able to believe in them. You need to be able to believe that they can come up with their own um, their own uh, solutions. I think kind of getting out of your own way as a coach is really important um, because it's very easy to kind of get sucked into or, or to collude with your client if something is going on that's gone on in, in your own life, for example. So there, there's loads of different traits, but listening is, is definitely one of the key ones. What do you think is the optimum or optimal outcome um, for a, a typical persona that you'd be looking to coach? How do you mean? Well, you know... Um, how long of a how long of a time frame do you expect to be able to work with someone to, to see positive results? Yeah, so normally an engagement is kind of ten to twelve hours is typically what you need. Um, normally, your first couple of hours are around kind of setting up that coaching agreement and really setting the foundation for the rest of the coaching sessions, um, and to see real change and to really explore. You're looking at a ninety minute or two hour session. Okay. Um, so it's normally two hours at the start, and then whatever that is, um, five two hour sessions typically in between. With a little bit of time for wrap up, and um, you know, if if, if it's with a, a CEO or an entrepreneur who isn't necessarily reporting into someone, it's just them. If it's with you know someone stepping into management for the first time or a high potential in your business or uh, you know a senior manager, it, it may be that you have a tri-party conversation with that person's line manager to agree expectations, etc. But yeah, it's normally around kind of ten to twelve hours. And. Out of those 10 to 12 hours, mm. you talked a bit about um, being able to get to the point with a client where they are realizing these yeah. one to two to three different things that are signals for them as to, okay, I'm going in the wrong direction. Mm. Um, is that kind of the outcome to know those one or two or three things? No, not, not necessarily. The outcome will, uh, the outcome changes depending on the person. Um, so it's it's totally your agenda uh, as the coachy. If you're coming to coaching, it's because you either want to you know make a positive change, uh, you want to stop yourself doing certain things, you want to do more of certain things. So it, it really depends. Um, a lot of times it comes back to very fundamental conversations around values and really discovering what values are. That can be an important piece of work. And um, certainly, you know, looking at demons or gremlins or, or your blocks or whatever is, is massively important. Okay. But it really depends on the client. Okay, it's totally up to them. Okay. What do you think um, in terms of one single person that's been a big influence on you? I think there's, there's been a lot. Um, certainly my family, my mom and my dad have been a big influence on me. Uh, Laura, definitely, you know, just in terms of the amount of support that you get from her. Uh, Marcus, my old boss in FK, um, has been great, particularly on the recruitment side, just in terms of, of advice. So, you know, I don't have one kind of guru that I go to. Uh, lucky but, to have a whole load of different people. Yeah, I mean, and... and Maybe you just answered it there, but it was that, you know, the the Obi-Wan to your Luke Skywalker, 
mm. right? Um, the, the is there an individual there that you know you said, listen, I'm going to take this to the next level. Um, I am doing. Uh, you know, you, you successfully running top tier with Laura for the last four years, like you said, mm. um, and partway through 2019 said, listen, I'm going to go ahead and do the coaching. Um, like you said, enriching your own ability to help your clients, to help your customers yeah. um, is a fantastic thing. Um, is there an example of anybody out there professionally, personally, that you'd say, listen, I kind of look at what they're doing and say, um, you know, I, I'm impressed with how they do it. Um, is there somebody that you know, um, th- that you would like to either try to emulate or yeah. that you look to for inspiration? Honestly, no. Um, and that that's not trying to be big headed in any way. I, I look at lots of different people and what to do on the recruitment side, for example, and I see, you know, clever marketing or, or an idea that we might try to take ourselves or I see a lot of people doing similar stuff to what we're doing at the minute. So I wouldn't say there's kind of any one particular person. I think what I do, what I like to do is to, I suppose look at the positive aspects of a whole load of different people decide what I like decide what I don't like and, and kind of make my own way that's good um, yeah I tend to do the same thing yeah I didn't, I, I'd say I, you know I never really had in my um, what probably 15 years in my professional career between the time I left Fidelity in Boston in the year 2000 and then I moved to Ireland uh, and then spent 10 years working uh, for BNP Paribas, I don't think I ever had one single mentor. Yeah. I had one when I left, you know, that was there in, in Boston for me, um, who became a good friend, but then uh, lost touch with him. But, you know, it was always look to other people for influence. Look at other people and say, I like what they're doing. Yeah. I don't like what they're doing. Mm. So do more of what the person you like doing. Do, yeah. do more of what they're doing. Do less of what the other one's doing. Yeah, and I think, like, for me, what I've probably discovered, and, and I was doing it, but subconsciously, is that I tend to gravitate towards people who I can trust. Um, I gravitate towards people who, I suppose, in some way have similar kind of ethical values. Um, because trust and fairness are really, really important for me. And if I'm doing something for someone, I, I don't expect something in return. But at the same time, you, you know, you, you kind of want to get a little bit back or you want to see that someone has your back if you have theirs as well. So those types of things are massively important. Okay. I was going to suggest that you and I try a, um, a fictitious coaching session right now. Live demo. Um, Let's do it. You want to do it? <laughs> no, if you want. <laughs> How long do you have? <laughs> exactly. No, Which demon no. do you want to work I, on? I, I think we'll leave those demons to one side for now. We'll capture that leave, off air. Leave the mics rolling. I, I, I do live a transparent life, but not that transparent. Um, but anyway, listen, Paul, thank you for coming back on the show. Very well um, really appreciate you having here. Anything from a closing perspective that you want to kind of say to the world uh, with our um, with our massive listener base across 23 countries? <laughs> yeah, well, coaching can be done virtually as well, so no Man. problem at all. Um, no, I think, like, I, I'd encourage everyone to, uh, everyone to, to, you know, seek out a coach. It, it absolutely doesn't need to be me. Um, I've had a lot of coaching through the course in particular um, and I've seen the benefits genuinely for myself so I, I just encourage people to look into it and be curious about it and be curious about themselves what's the best way for them to get in touch with you yeah paul at possible.ie I love that mm. URL anything is possible.ie it is <laughs> <laughs> I've just reserved a few new URLs myself and it's amazing to see what's there and what's not there I know yeah. so maybe go buy up all the ones that you're amazed to see are all still out there and see if you can sell them yeah, exactly <laughs> anything's possible anything's possible it, exactly all right. Well, thanks for coming on the show, Paul. Thanks. Paul. Money never sleeps, pal. So that wraps it up, folks. Thanks for listening for us. Try to figure out why Paul does what he does. Links are in the show notes for this episode on moneyneversleeps.ie, so check us out online. Remember, if you or a colleague need help attracting and retaining great talent for your fintech or financial services company, it is highly advisable that you build a relationship with the team at Top Tier Recruitment, as they really know their stuff. You can find them at toptierrecruitment.com. Also, thank you to Conan Brophy from Create Sound for recording and editing this podcast. If you have any ideas at all of starting up your own podcast, please get in touch with Conan. He's a consummate professional. As for me, I increase the odds of startup success. Get in touch if you want to lay the groundwork for doing something incredible or just shift into high gear. Finally, till next time, thanks for listening. See ya. See ya.